Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. Join Stacy and learn from her 20 years of experience as she shares top-notch advice on marketing best practices for brands and walks you through how to leverage entertainment content and influencer partnerships to increase your brand's overall consumer engagement and most importantly, your sales. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I'm Stacy Jones. And today, I'm going to talk to you about why every individual on your team makes a difference to your company, and that forgetting that is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. I love reading. It didn't come naturally to me, and I actually struggled with it as a child. But now, I read at lightning speed and am a massive, massive consumer of content. I'd far prefer to read an article or book than listen to something or watch a video in most cases. Don't get me wrong, TV and movies are great, and I do enjoy those too. But if I'm going to be in an active state of learning, then my favorite way to do so is to read. A couple of years ago, I read a book at the suggestion of one of my team members, who had read it as required reading at her former job. She was in customer service, and this book ideates the primary principles of what makes customers happy. I was actually quite resistant to reading it. I had ordered the book a few months previously, and it sat on my shelf waiting to be read and was consistently being bypassed over. If someone really loves a book and suggests I read it, I will, but this one just didn't seem like it was going to be a fit. I was wrong, and in fact, it's one of the top 10 best books I've ever read for business owners, which is why I'm going to share what I learned from it with you today. While this book would be invaluable for my entire agency to read, as we read books as a team every now and then, it is one I've earmarked to share with our team members whose job it is to help keep our clients happy. So. What is this magic fairy tale of a book? Well, it is, in fact, a book called Inside the Magic Kingdom by Tom Connellan. And it's all about how Disney manages to run so smoothly. And while reflecting on how they do so, the book provides insight to business stakeholders on how to make their own companies run smoothly as well. And what it comes down to is putting in place expectations and leading the team to get them to meet them. There are actually seven reasons why this book resonated with me, and they're based on the lessons the book teaches. The first lesson is that competition is anyone the customer compares you with. The first chapter starts off powerfully, with a lesson that fits both sales and customer service individuals alike. The message is, your competitor is anyone who your clients interact with in a similar way they interact with you. That means for Hollywood Branded that any agency, any media outlet, Any vendor of any type is a competitor, that the client will compare our services to anyone they interact with who is selling them anything. That opens the door very widely and exposes a whole new mess of potential problems. The second lesson is pay fantastic attention to detail. I am a fanatic for detail, and yet we still miss things. I strive to ensure our clients receive our best work, yet consistently I see spelling errors, sentence fragments, and that's just for me. My team fails often as well. We're so often in such a rush and stretch juggling a constant onslaught of moving projects that details can sometimes get lost in the process. And yet these details are what the clients always seem to remember. I bet you don't have that problem, do you? Everyone has this problem today. We are all super busy. And once years ago, we had an employee post the wrong client's post to another client's social media site. I was absolutely horrified. The client was less than happy. The employee just shrugged it off. Needless to say, that employee's not with our organization any longer. Also, years ago, I had another employee post an outdated photo to a client's social media site. It wasn't a disaster in itself, but it did cost us the opportunity to bid for new business from that client. Figuring out a way to slow down, as well as have people understand that it is absolutely okay and acceptable to ask for a second set of eyes on materials is a major goal we have been undertaking. And we've succeeded there as we managed to not make the same mistakes twice. The third lesson is, everyone walks the talk. I am adamant that no job's too low for anyone to do in our organization. I try to consistently demonstrate that fact. Over the years, we've put in practice a rotating chores chart every month for the team to pitch in and help with trivial tasks so that no one person is stuck being the cleaning crew for everyone else. And by the way, we do have a cleaning crew, but there's still tidying up and the like to do. We threw a massive 800-plus person event for a client with over 40 vendors participating, 
Due to a miscommunication, our team had forgotten one slightly major component of the event. No one was hired to handle the trash, and at the end of the night, we had barrels of it that all broke apart by the dumpsters. Despite being in an evening gown, and despite being the owner of the agency, I led the charge and the cleanup with the team. The result was that everyone pitched in, and the picture of me shoveling trash with my bare hands along with the story was told and shown to new team members for years. It was certainly not a glory moment, and it could have been a horrible end of the night, but we all laughed, and I bought myself a new set of nails and manicure the very first thing the next day. Everyone walks the talk. This was an important lesson and a reminder to me for both new business development and the office atmosphere. As we developed new marketing materials, each component needed to identify with and complement the other. Our brochures, our sales pitches, our website, our social media voice, everything needed to speak to our core story. And there are always areas of our agency that we can step up as well. We have a lot of things that come in our office, samples and signage and projects and finish that have leftover stuff. And it can tend to have clutter build and employees think it's acceptable. But that leads to someone missing, tossing in a paper in a trash can and it can sit there. So defining what is acceptable and keeping the high standards that we must have consistently be on the forefront of everyone's mind is something that we have to put in practice. And more important, you need to figure out a way to create culture that automatically follows this. The fourth lesson is customers are best heard through many ears. I speak to our clients, and we have one primary point who manages and speaks to our retainer clients for product placement and one who handles conversations around influencers and so forth. But regardless of having those key points, it's important to develop more systems to evaluate feedback, whether that be surveys or conversations and have more listening occasions. But I will tell you, clients can be quite resistant to answering surveys or truly discussing what makes them happy, and more importantly, unhappy. So this is an area that can be a little tougher to figure out. The fifth lesson is reward, recognize, and celebrate. This is a lesson our team has really worked on mastering. It's very easy to identify and call out to an individual what is wrong, but I often forget and quite frankly take it for granted that they also need kudos as they're just doing their job. The book stresses that people need to hear three times more praise than negative feedback. And one of the takeaways is the idea to create individual cards that you give to someone anytime you identify that they've done something right. I've taken this one step further, and we have twice monthly meetings where we read out loud from cards that everyone in the office participates in writing, which honor and call out any action someone might have done that was helpful to someone else. It's one of the best things we've put in place at our agency and something everyone looks forward to. Plus, we give away prizes for a lucky card that's drawn. So that's a nice perk as well. Our cards list the name of the person being thanked, the person who is thanking, and a place to write a quick note about why the card is being given. Obviously, whoever has the most cards has the highest likelihood of winning, but it really makes everyone step up and pitch in. Everyone makes a difference. Obviously, I hope to you, at least, this makes sense. The idea here is that everyone makes a difference. If you remove one person, you no longer have full functionality. This is an idea that even your more entry team members need to learn. And our thank you card program has helped with this tremendously. You want to engage everyone, from those who may be simply having a goal of earning a paycheck versus those who are actually trying to build their career. I actually read the book four years ago and took notes for a blog I was going to write and listed what my plans were going to be to implement at Hollywood Branded. I did move forward with making changes, and as going through the notes I had made preparing for this podcast, I realized those changes have led us to have an entirely different team of extremely engaged individuals. We aren't perfect, and I doubt any business is, but we are a lot closer to being the agency that I always strive to have, with a shared team spirit of people who genuinely like coming to work every day, and who help and support one another, the agency, and our clients in reaching their goals. Stop by HollywoodBranded.com for more tips, and check out our library, which has infographics, white papers, ebooks, and videos, or our blog, blog blog.HollywoodBranded.com, which has hundreds of helpful hints on how to make brand influencer and entertainment content partnerships a success from the get-go. That's it for this episode. I hope it was helpful, and please let me know if you have any feedback. I'll see you next week. And as always, if you need a little or a lot of help, my agency, Hollywood Branded, is here to lend a hand. And if you'd leave a review or any questions I can address in the future, I'd really appreciate it as your feedback helps me know my advice is valuable and interesting to you. Are you ready to make the magic of product placement? celebrity event activations, or influencer partnerships help your sales. Visit HollywoodBranded.com to gain access to free content to learn which key tactics best fit your brand.
you'll find surveys, webinars, daily blogs, ebooks, and guides, all created to make sure you have access to the best possible marketing practices. Let's make that entertainment marketing magic happen for you.